System Commander is a Windows application used to configure Command Fusion automation hardware. It features automatic discovery of hardware which allows you to scan for CF-Link devices on the network and easily configure and test them. It makes updating firmware easy and the powerful rules engine allows for automated macro triggering to be configured. All communications handled by System Commander use the openly documented CF-Link protocol available to any user of Command Fusion hardware. System Commander can be downloaded from the Command Fusion website. It is a portable program that does not require installation. Simply unzip it to any location on your computer and run the executable file. When you first launch System Commander, you will be presented with an interface that is separated into four sections, as well as the main menu bar. The CF-Link Devices section shows the online status with a button to toggle online-offline mode and a button to perform a new scan for CF-Link devices. Below the buttons is a tree of automatically discovered CF-Link devices which can be selected to bring up their configuration options. Below the device tree is a form used for sending test commands via the CF-Link network. The main area of the program is used to configure and test the selected CF-Link device. When you select a device in the tree, the main section will fill with a list of tabs relevant to the device. Each tab contains options and tools for configuring and testing specific aspects of each device, such as configuring general properties, setting up rules or schedules, or testing connectivity of relays, I.O. ports and other control ports. The last section across the bottom of the interface is the communication log. This area logs all incoming and outgoing traffic in an easy to read format. The log is great for debugging communications as well as copying commands for use outside of System Commander. The automatic discovery feature allows you to scan for CF-Link devices on the network as well as select and configure them. System Commander can automatically discover devices in two ways. The first is via the local network using UDP broadcast communications. To do this, you must have a Command Fusion LAN bridge. The second way is via RS-232. This can be done with any Command Fusion device that has an onboard RS-232 port. Let's take a look at the UDP discovery mode first. So, as I mentioned, for any hardware to be detected in this mode, we must have a LAN bridge connected to our network. If you do not have a DHCP server enabled on your network, the LAN bridge will default to a self-assigned IP address. We then need to check that System Commander is configured for UDP discovery. To do this, choose Network, then Settings from the main menu. Make sure that Ethernet communication is enabled and UDP is selected. Other settings in this window are not required for UDP auto discovery. After we have configured our UDP settings, we can go back to the main window and click the offline button. This will switch us to online mode and begin the discovery process. This takes only a second or two and once System Command has picked up the LAN bridge, it will also discover all other devices connected to it on the CF-Link network. We can also enable online mode by clicking on network, then go online, or using the F12 shortcut key. If we want to use the RS-232 discovery feature, we need to do things a little differently. First, we need to make sure that the device that we are connecting to is in program mode. This is done by pressing a button on top of the Command Fusion hardware labelled Setup or COM mode, depending on which piece of hardware you are using. Now we will connect the RS-232 port on the device to the COM port on your computer. If you don't have any COM ports available, then you can use a third party RS-232 to USB adapter. In System Commander, choose Network, then Settings from the menu. Ensure that COM port communication mode is enabled. Then select the appropriate COM port that your device is connected to. Once again, we then switch to online mode and the auto discover process will begin. As you can see, it will not only pick up the device you are directly connected to, but it will also discover any other devices connected via the CF-Link network. Devices with a green indicator are working correctly. 
devices without valid firmware installed are shown with a red indicator. It may take a little longer for a device with invalid or no firmware to appear in your hardware tree, as these devices will not respond to discover requests, but instead auto-announce themselves on power-up and on regular intervals. When you first get your Command Fusion hardware, the first thing you should do is check to see if your devices have the latest firmware installed. We can check the firmware version of our device by selecting it in the device tree. Under the General tab, we can see the basic details of our hardware. CF-Link ID, serial number, firmware version, and MAC address if applicable. So take note of the firmware version listed, and then go to firmware.commandfusion.com and select the appropriate device. This will take you to another page which lists the current firmware number. If this number is larger than that on your hardware, then it is time to update it. To download the firmware, click on zip file, then click raw. The firmware will then download to your computer. You will then need to unzip it before it can be used. We will assume for this video that our hardware has all the latest firmware installed. For more details on how to update firmware, see our firmware updating video. Command Fusion hardware communicates with each other over a peer-to-peer -peer bus called CF-Link. This bus requires each device to have its own unique ID for communications. This ID is called the CF-Link ID. From the factory, devices of the same model all come out with the same CF-Link ID. Unlike other control systems, during auto discovery, System Commander will report any ID conflicts on the CF-Link network and handle assigning unique IDs to all conflicting devices. The end result is no more conflicts and a healthier CF-Link network without having to manually connect individual devices to assign their ID. After devices have been discovered, you can click on them in the CF-Link devices tree to bring up their configuration options. Each CF-Link device has a few general settings that can be configured or viewed. Settings common to all CF-Link devices are the CF-Link ID, serial number, and firmware version. Devices with an onboard serial port will allow you to set up the communication settings for the RS-232 serial port. The LAN bridge will also show options specific to Ethernet connectivity, such as MAC address and standard LAN settings. The LAN bridge also features a real-time clock, which can synchronise with a time server or be manually configured. After making any changes to the configuration, use the Save button to save the new configuration to the device memory. The Reset button will force the device to reboot, while the Refresh button will request a configuration properties from the device and update System Commander with the current details. Devices with control ports such as relays, I.O., I.R. or serial ports can be tested using the System Commander interface. Simply select the device from the CF-Link Devices tree and choose the tab that relates to the port you want to test. For example, the CF-Mini has four relay ports we can test. There are options to test all aspects of the CF-Link protocol for relays, including basic on and off commands, as well as toggle and pulse commands. The interface will also show the live state of each relay with an indicator graphic that turns on when the relay is closed. For IR ports, you can choose the port and format of IR data to test, including the onboard database, which has a wizard built in to find the right command. Pressing the send button will send the IR data, allowing you to easily test IR commands. For I.O. ports, we can see their current input or output state, as well as trigger their output state when the port is configured in one of the output modes. Each CF-Link device has an onboard microprocessor capable of performing rule-based macro triggering, creating a network of distributed intelligence. Rules allow each device to respond to events and trigger macros to run across the CF-Link bus, so as an example, an event like a dry contact closing can trigger a relay to close and send a specific IR command. It is important to note that the rules should be configured on the device that will be directly receiving the event data. For example, 
if the event that will be used to trigger a macro is a dry contact input on a CF Mini, then the rule should be configured on the CF Mini. If the event was a specific incoming string from an RS-232 port, then the rule should be configured on the device with the RS-232 port being used to receive the data. To create rules, we first set up the macros that will be triggered by adding them to the device that will receive the events. In this example, we will be creating a macro to lower a projector screen, turn on a projector and turn on a Blu-ray player. We will call this macro System Start Blu-ray. Now we need to add each action in order that we want them to be performed. First we want to turn on the projector because this can take a while to warm up. The projector is controlled via the onboard RS-232 port of the LAM bridge. So we can go to the action builder and select onboard com. The target device list will then automatically fill with any CF link device on our network with an onboard RS-232 port. Select the LAN bridge, then fill out the RS-232 command that needs to be sent to power up the projector. Press OK and notice the CF link command is automatically built for you. Now we can press OK and continue adding the next action for the macro. The next action is to lower the projector screen. This is done using a relay connected to a CF Mini. The relay ports will automatically populate based on the ports available on the target device. In our case, we want to pulse Relay 3 for one second. Press OK and again the CF Link command is automatically generated for you. We want this command to happen without any delay, so leave the delay set to zero. Lastly, we want to fire an IR command to turn on the Blu-ray player. We will use the CF Mini's onboard IR database and the Action Builder to automatically create the IR command to send. Select IR Action Type, choose the device we want to send the IR from, in our case IR Port 1 of a CF Mini. Choose DBA Format and press the Build button to bring up the IR database wizard. Enter the device details, Samsung, Blu-ray player, try code set 0199 and choose the discrete power on command rather than power toggle. Press OK to automatically generate the CF link command. We can then enter a delay if we wanted, which would add a pause between the projector screen down command and the Blu-ray power on command. But in this case, we don't need to delay the IR command, so we just press OK to finish adding the last action to the macro. Now we want to add the rule which will cause this macro to be started. In our case, we want the system startup macro to be triggered whenever a button on a wall switch is pressed, which is hooked up to an I.O. port of the CF Mini configured as a dry contact input. When the wall switch is pressed, we can use the communication log to see the incoming CF link data format that we need to use to trigger our macro. Clear the log, then find the command of the wall switch being pressed. Right click and copy the CF link command. Now add the rule by pressing the add rule button. Give the rule a name relating to the input event and paste the command into the search string field. Then select the macro we want to fire and press OK. Before the rule will become active, we need to save it to the device memory. Press the save to device button to begin this process. A progress bar will pop up just above the log area to show the save progress. After this is done, you can use the load from device button to double check that the data was saved to device correctly. The Command Fusion LAN bridge features an onboard real-time clock that allows macros to be performed based on a simple yet powerful scheduling system. Schedules can be configured to run once off, daily, weekly or monthly with customizable options such as days of the week or month, recurrence rates and specific months of the year. There is also a holiday schedule mode to randomly trigger actions in the macro for a set period of time. This can be used to simulate occupancy while the homeowner is away. 
To demonstrate scheduling, we will configure a schedule to power down a projector and retract a motorised projector ceiling mount at 6pm every weekday. The first step is to create the macro we want to perform. Add the macro and give it a name. Then add each action to the macro. First, we want to send an RS232 command to power down the projector. Use the action builder and select the onboard com action type. The target device in our example case will be the onboard RS232 port of the LAN bridge. Then enter the RS232 command we want to send and press OK. The CF link command will be automatically generated for you. Press OK again to finish adding the action to the macro. Now repeat the process for the command to trigger the motorised projector mount to retract. In our example case, this is done by pulsing relay port 1 of a CF mini to close for 1 second. So choose the relay action type and CF mini target device. Then select port 1 and set it to pulse for 1 second. Pressing OK again will add the action to the macro. Now that we have finished creating the macro, we need to set up the schedule that will be used to trigger this macro. First, click the Add Schedule button. Give it a name related to what the schedule is being used for. In our case, Daily Room Off. We want this rule to trigger every weekday, so we select the Weekly tab and tick each weekday. And leave it to recur every week. Next, we want to change the action type to Trigger Macro and select the macro we want to perform. Then we input the start date and time. The schedule will recur every week from this start date, so we will just leave it as today's date. The start time we want to use is 6pm. We do not need to use any of the advanced settings in this example, so leave them disabled. Press OK to finish creating the schedule. Now that the schedule has been created, we need to save it to the LAN bridge before it will become active. Click the Save to Device button to start this process. A progress bar will pop up just above the communication log to show the save process. Once it's complete, you can use the Load from Device button to ensure that all schedules were successfully saved to the device. To test the schedule, we can change the real-time clock manually to a time near the schedule start time, and then reset the LAN bridge for the new time to take effect. Wait for the schedule time to come around and use the communications log to watch what is happening on the CF Link bus. All Command Fusion hardware with IR ports can send IR codes in a variety of ways. Using the onboard IR database, sending IR code strings in Pronto hex format or our proprietary IR format, or by uploading IR files to the device and recalling the codes via their function name. To upload an IR file to a device, the file needs to be created using our IR Learner software. Learning IR commands is covered in a separate tutorial video. After the IR file has been created, select the device you want to upload it to in the System Commander CF Link device tree. Then select the Manage IR Files tab. If this tab is not visible, then the device you have selected is not capable of sending IR commands. Next, click the Add File button and browse for the IR file you want to upload. The IR Functions tree will then be populated with a list of commands stored in the IR file. Before any of these commands can be used, the IR file needs to be saved to the device memory by clicking on the Save to Device button. A progress bar will pop up above the communication log showing the upload progress. Once this is complete, the IR codes can be tested by selecting a command from the IR function tree, then selecting a port number from the test stored IR codes area and pressing the send button. The test command window in the bottom left corner of System Commander can be used to send any CF link command to devices on the network. This is great for testing specific commands. Any hex bytes you want to send should be entered in the format shown on screen. See our CF Link protocol documentation for more details. 
That's the basics of using System Commander to configure the Command Fusion hardware. For other videos covering features in detail, check our System Commander playlist on YouTube or visit our support page.